I'm joined now by Craig Eggers from Dolby Laboratories to talk about Dolby Atmos. So Craig, first of all, let's talk about Dolby Atmos in the cinema. In the cinema, Dolby Atmos is an object-based format that allows us to position audio anywhere within the three-dimensional space. In the cinema, we literally decoupled all of the individual speakers that consisted of the, the arrays, the side arrays, the back arrays. All of those have been decoupled into individual addressable point sources where we can snap audio to individual speakers within the cinema. The addition of overhead speakers in the cinema enable us to create a three-dimensional, highly immersive playback experience. Okay, so and obviously last year was a big year for, for Dolby Atmos because it also became available in the home, I think in September. Can you explain how the home version differs from the cinema version? Well, one, one way it differs obviously is the number of speakers. Um, you can deliver Dolby Atmos in the home with as little as seven speakers, uh, what we refer to as a 5.1 on the floor plus two overhead speakers. We're seeing Dolby Atmos implemented in 5.1.4 configurations, 7.1.4 configurations, Trinoff, for example, is doing, is doing as many as 32 speakers. Um, so obviously, uh, in the home, we're going to have less speaker counts. Uh, what happens is uh, you take a cinematic mix. Um, our partners take that cinematic mix. They perform a near-field mix, conform it to the home environment, and that's what becomes the source content for Blu-ray disc or OTT streaming. So that's fair to say then, uh, even with 16 or 32 channels, it is still effectively becoming a channel-based system in the home. It's not a channel-based system. We, we've thrown out this idea of channel-based uh, uh, systems or channel-based content. What's on Adobe um, Blu-ray disc, Adobe Atmos Blu-ray disc, literally is nothing but a bunch of data. And that data comes into our AV receiver. Now, when we set up our AV receiver, we're going to tell the AV receiver how many speakers we have, where they're located, the types of speakers, are they small speakers, large speakers, are they overhead speakers, are they Dolby enabled speakers. That information combined with uh, equalization as part of the AV receiver informs what we refer to as the rendering block in the AV receiver. This is the intelligence because armed with all the information that we give it, it will conform that data stream to the specific speaker configuration we have in the home, whether it's seven speakers or 34 speakers. So the intelligence in the system is in the rendering that's in the AVR. Obviously, not everyone's going to be able to convince their wife to let them put speakers on the ceiling, so I believe you have a unique solution to that problem. We have a unique solution. We refer to it as Dolby Atmos Enabled Speakers. It's an upward-firing speaker at a specific angle. We have specific specifications with regards to crossover, uh, dispersion, and other characteristics that are part of our licensing documentation. Um, in the theater that you were just in, which is a 7.1.4 configuration, our front left and right mains and our two back surrounds incorporate the Dolby enabled speaker technology. And in some of the demos that we've been doing, and I'm sure you've heard them in, in the room there, as we switch between the overheads and the Dolby Atmos enabled speakers, it's seamless. Yeah, I actually can testify to that. I've just done a demo and it, it, I could just tell the difference, but it, they were incredibly effective. Um, what would happen though, obviously in terms of the person's um, home cinema or lounge, whatever they're using, in terms of the ceiling, what kind of ceiling do you need to have in order to, to be effective? Good question. Um, if you have a highly vaulted ceiling, we actually recommend that you try to do overhead, uh, overhead speakers. Um, if you have, the one thing we don't want you to have in an application where you're utilizing Dolby Atmos enabled speakers is acoustical treatment on the ceiling. We want a flat reflective ceiling to enable us to reflect that object uh, height information off of the ceiling and create that layer of sound over the listener. In terms of uh, domestic uh, partners for Atmos, uh, which manufacturers are now supporting it? So we've got eight manufacturers now that are bringing AV receivers to the marketplace. Some of them include Onkyo, Denon, Marantz, Integra, Yamaha, Pioneer, Steinway Lingdorf, uh, uh, I'm sure I'm missing somebody here, Trinov, and Yamaha. Um, on the speaker side, we've got uh, folks like Triad that are doing uh, dedicated uh, Dolby Atmos enabled speakers. Um, we see Andrew Jones from Pioneer doing a one-piece Dolby Atmos enabled uh, with the two front drivers. Um, and then we have uh, manufacturers and partners that are doing modules. Because a lot of people that have great speaker systems don't want to throw those speaker systems in the crusher just to get Dolby Atmos. So the addition of a module to the system that can sit on top of the speaker or nearby the speaker is a great way to bring Dolby Atmos into the home. And we have uh, people like Kef and Definitive and uh, Atlantic Technology and others bringing modules to support this in the home. 
So you've got your Dolby Atmos receiver, you've got your Dolby Atmos speakers. How do you deliver Dolby Atmos into the home? Uh, Atmos will come into the home in two manner. First of all, there are 11 Blu-ray discs now that feature Dolby Atmos soundtracks. Uh, besides Blu-ray disc, uh, you'll see streaming content, over-the-top content, uh, which is increasingly becoming unpopular with the entertainment experience. Uh, and which studios are currently supporting Atmos? Currently, um, we have announced support from uh, Lionsgate, uh, from Warners and Paramount. We've got uh, content coming from Bollywood as well as China. And there um, are additional announcements to come this year. Okay, Craig, thank you very much. Thank you very much.